So now that I have my other piece made, and you guys should have two pieces made as well, the reason um, that we have six rows on one piece of beadwork and seven rows on the other piece of beadwork is so that when we fit them together, you can see that the up beads are catty corner to each other so that we can use use that in our favor to so zip to so close the beadwork and what we call zipping up peyote. So when they line up, the teeth they look like teeth on a zipper. Just like that. So before I begin that, I'm going to have to end, I'm going to have to end one of my um, working threads. So I've still got a working thread on both pieces. I'm going to go ahead and lay my little crystal down in the center of the back. And I am going to put the top on just like that so that you can get a look at how that actually is going to look inside and see that it just fits so beautifully in there and how I decided to come up with this. It just just is spectacular. I just love it. Now, um, quite possibly you'll want to use the working thread that is left on the front of your um, on the front piece of your beadwork because then that one you should have your set your seventh row and have your corner accent bead here and that's a good place to a uh, good starting place if you did if you already ended that thread you can just use the working thread that's left remaining on your back piece and we can start from there just as easy I'm going to go ahead and end off my front thread and I'm going to be using the piece that has that seventh row on it to uh, leave that working thread on and work from there all right, so to end this thread, I am I had added my last bead and stepped up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew on the diagonal over across a couple of beads until I'm exiting my first bronze up bead like that. And um, actually, I'm no, I'm doing that wrong. I want to be exiting from the down bead, so I'm going to go through that next down bead, right there. And then to tie some half hitch knots in here, it's pr pretty easy. I'm just going to grab, push my needle under the thread bridge, bridge in front of the bead I'm exiting. I'm going to grab those threads under there, and I'm going to pull this through slowly. Till I form this little small loop right here, and then I'm going to stick my needle through that loop. As I pull out down on that, I want to make sure that that notch falls into place at front of that same bead that I'm currently exiting, just like that. Then I can sew on the diagonal through the next up bead and the next down bead, and I can repeat that. I can take my needle and grab the thread. Bridges under the bead in front of the bead that I'm exiting. You know, sometimes it's a little hard to get your needle in there, but just like that. I'm going to pull it through slow, form my little loop, poke my needle through, and I'm once again I'm going to make sure that that um, little notch falls right in between the beads where I was currently exiting. And you can do that a couple more times just to get a few um, half hitch knots into your beadwork. You can even sew further in to the beadwork to do this trick technique, whichever is easiest for you. Just remember that before you cut that thread, you want to move away from that last knot. So I'm going to do one more because three is a good number. I am going to put my needle right through that loop and I'm going to pull it down in there nice and tight between the two beads where my thread was exiting. So now I've tied that half hitch knot, I'm simply going to move through a few more beads before I cut this thread. Because now my thread's really nice and secure. I can just simply take the scissors or a thread burner and end the thread. So the easiest way to go about zipping these two pieces of beadwork closed is um, to start at a corner. It's just that simple. Um, because my working thread is exiting from the skull bead right here, I need to go ahead and sew into that little accent bead that's sitting catty corner like that, because that's where I want to start my start my um, zipping from. So now that I'm exiting from that bead, 
I am going to lay my other beadwork right on top. So in order to do the first zip, I am going to come down through the next gold bead that's working towards the short side. I'm working, I'm sewing in clockwise and I'm sewing across the top part right now. That's just the short side. And I'm going to put a thread right there. Then I'm going to skip a bead and sew through the next sticking out bead on the back side of the beadwork, which is a bronze bead. And it's best if you can make sure that you don't have any um, threads showing. So pull it as tight as you can. And now you can see that the next bead we need that's sticking out we need to come through is back over on the right. And so this is all working kind of like on a diagonal. And then we're going to go back to the left. And if you can, you can try to get through the left bead and the right bead at the same time. As you zip. Just make sure that you don't get your thread hung up on your corners here. I'm going to hold that working thread back out of my way and try to work two, two beads at a time. Stitching left to right. You could just as easily be stitching right to left. But you'll see how easy it is to get your working thread hung up on the corners during this process. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're getting everything in place. We want the top part of our dome of the front piece facing outwards and the dome part of the back piece facing outwards. And you do not have to sew through two beads at once. If it's easier for you to do the left bead than the right bead, then by all means, do it that way. But go ahead and continue stitching until you get to the next corner. And I'll show you guys how to turn the corner. I'm almost there. I've got a one left bead, a right bead, and then I'm going to have one more bead on the left. Go through my last sticking up delica here on the left. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get out of frame. All right, so now we're at our next corner. So what we're going to do is we are going to sew through the sticking up gold bead here on the right because we need to go back to the right. Then we're going to go through the accent bead at the top. Then we're going to come down through the gold bead back on our other side that's going down the first long side. Then we need to come through the first sticking up bronze bead back on the left. And then we'll come through the first sticking out bronze bead here on the right. And this time when we pull, we can pull it all nice and secure. And that corner is done. And now we can go back to stitching a couple of beads at a time or one bead at a time, whatever you prefer. And whatever is easiest for you to make sure you don't split that working thread as you're working through the zip process here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and continue zipping down this long side. And when I get to the corner, I will come back and we will talk about rounding the corner one more time. And then we'll work on getting our stone inserted. So I've come back around to my next corner and my working thread is exiting that last sticking out bronze delica and it was on the left so I've got to come through the first gold bead on the right I got to pass through the center of the accent bead here on the left I need to come down through the gold bead on the right hand side right here And now I can stitch across to that first bronze delica sticking out here on the left. 
in the first one on the right. All right, so now we're going to get our stone in place. So what we're going to do is we've got this cute little pocket because we've closed off the other sides of this little triangle. We're just going to stick our little stone right there in the middle. And then we're just going to go ahead and continue stitching this, zipping this little um, triangle closed. Just like we did. I'm going to go ahead and try to do two beads at once. And I'm going to make sure that my working thread does not get caught up on the end of my the corner of my beadwork down here. You can kind of hold your little stone into position the way that you want it. And then when we get finished, I'll show you guys how I pinch this lower section off down here to make sure that the bead doesn't shift or the stone doesn't shift around inside the beadwork. But it, once you get this side zipped up, it really is pretty darn secure, and you really don't have to worry about it a whole lot. So I'll just call that part um, optional. And here we are at the top corner again, so I'm going to go through my last sticking out bronze bead. And then I am going to sew through this corner again. I'm going to come through the gold on the right the accent bead on the left that little one in the middle I'm going to come down the next gold bead on the right and so now you can see that the stone is in there it doesn't really move around a lot but I want to I like the um, effect that it gave me by, I, I, actually, I add a little gold accent bead in the corners here, and that tightens it up quite a bit. So let's get into our next corner. We can actually um, sew down right here and work in the opposite direction. We're exiting down through that gold bead. So we can actually sew right straight down through all of these gold beads directly below it. And come all the way down. Pull that thread through. Now we're in position to work on the center of the speed work. So I actually stowed, sewed my little corner beads into these uh, two sets of bronze beads in each corner. So come on through that next bronze bead. I came down the gold beads here on the left, so I want to go up through that um, gold bead or that bronze bead on the left. I'm going to pick up one of my gold delicas and I'm going to come down the bronze bead right here on sewing back and backwards actually so I'm sewing here's my thread on the left I'm sewing down the bead on the right on the other side of the corner and position that little bead right in here Can sew right back up that bronze bead on the left. Then we're going to sew on the diagonal to our next corner. So now we're in this bronze bead. We need to go through the down bead and the up bead. Right there. And keep doing that until we cross over to our next corner. The down bead and the up bead. We've got one more stitch to do to get into position, so we're going to go through that down bead and that up bead. Right there. And now we're ready to add our next little, uh, actually we need to sew across, I'm sorry, because we're coming out of the bottom. We can go through the gold bead, which is a down bead. Then we're going to come through the next gold bead and bronze bead on the other side of the corner, right there. So we were just positioning. So now we're ready to pick up the next gold delica. We are coming out of the top of the bead on the left. We're going to come down through the top of the bead on the right. Position that little bead. 
we are going to sew back up through this bronze bead here on the left again. It's up bead. Now we have two of them sewn into place. So now we're going to just repeat the steps of sewing down to this corner. But we're coming out of an up bead, so we know to sew through the next down bead and up bead. You do that all the way down to the next corner. Sewing on a diagonal. And just by putting those little accent beads in there, you can really feel how it's made the stone much firmer in place. So let's get the, down to the very bottom here. And I've got one more down bead and up bead right there. Then to get to the other side, I need to continue on through that first gold bead here on the left. And then I'm going to step up through the gold bead and the bronze bead above it, just like we did before. Now we can pick up our last accent bead here. We're coming out of the top of that bead. We're going to go through the top to bottom through the bead to the right of the one we're exiting right there. Get our little accent bead in there. We are going to come back up through just the bronze bead. I am going to sew back through my little, pretty little accent bead there. Then I am going to come back down through my bronze bead right there. Now before we do this next step, position your accent beads so that they sit horizontally in the corner. Anything that you need to do now, you can just go ahead and do, because we are almost done. Pull everything tight. Now this part, part is really kind of easy. I'm going to take my needle and I am going to poke it right between those two gold beads from the front straight through to the back. Now I'll pull that all the way through. Now I'm on the back side of this beadwork. So I'm going to take my needle. I should be exiting the beadwork right beside the same two bronze beads on the back that corresponded to the ones I was just working with on the front. So I'm going to come up through this one on the right, just like that. Right where my thread's exiting. I am going to come down the bead to the other side of it that sits right beside it. And I might have to poke around in there to get my needle into it. Just like this. So here's my working thread exiting that bead. I'm coming down through the bead right beside of it from top to bottom. Then I'm going to go right back up through that other bead. One more time. And I'm going to pull this all really nice and tight. And you can see that that pinches the bottom of the front side of my bezel so that my stone is um, in there nice and secure. Now I can do that a couple more rounds if I need to. I can come back through the beadwork right where my working thread is currently sitting. But when I come through the front side, I want to make sure that I'm coming through under that accent bead. So let me just get my needle into position. And see here that I'm coming through between those gold beads, but on the bottom side of that accent bead. I'm going to pull that thread through. And so now I've really got my stone in there nice and secure, and it's not moving around. I can still move it a little bit, but since this is an earring, I'm not going to stress out too much about it, but you can continue to tighten around this circle if you wanted to. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the way mine looks. So now we just need to end off our thread. 
So here we are, and we are back on the front side. I can sew right back up through that first sticking out Delica here on the left. And I am just going to stitch up through these beads by going through a down bead and an up bead, just like I did previously to move around to these corners. And as I go, I'm just going to pull my thread nice and tight. Or I can work my way straight out on a diagonal here towards the outside edge of the beadwork. So I can end this thread off. Just pay attention to where your bead is exiting. Go under the thread bridge. Right there. Above where your working thread is exiting. Bring yourself a little loop and tie some half inch knots. Move through a few beads and repeat the step, but make sure you're sewing on the diagonal so you don't wind up with exposed thread. Or we can sew up here to the top now to make a bail. So now that I'm going to tie a couple of half hitch knots, then I'm going to sew towards the top of my earring on the short side of the triangle. And I'm going to sew on up till I get right around in here. So once I get close to my gold beads, I can sew straight up on that diagonal line and come out through a gold bead. I can sew across and down the gold bead beside of it. Then I am going to sew on the diagonal again through my peyote beads here, the bronze. And we are going to sew to find the center of our project. So for a bale, it's totally up to you how you feel like adding your bale to the top of these triangles in order to um, add an earring finding. You know, you may decide you want to hang yours this way. I think it's going to look pretty to hang the sharp long point hanging downwards like that. And to position um, something like that. Now, forgive me, I had to put my um, magnifying head lights on here. All right, so what you want to do to center your, um, your bail, if you're making a beaded bail. You're going to take a look here between the two accent points sticking out on the top part of your earring or wherever you decide to, to line that up. So you can see that this center accent bead falls in line with this row of Delica beads right here underneath my thumbnail. You see where my working thread is exiting? So following that line, there are a total of eight of the bronze Delicas there on that, on that line. So I have stitched myself over into the fourth one from the from the left hand side and my thread is exiting here between the fourth and the fifth bead. So this set, this line this actual point here between that fourth and fifth bead on that line of delicas is the center point of the earring below. So basically if I were to I could do something like stitching a loop of beads around there. I don't particularly care for that. On this little um, triangle that I made, I actually created, I had a different kind of a center line here. I actually had three beads that I could utilize in the center. So what I did was I stitched a little tiny three bead strip of peyote and I sewed it into the beads on the front and the back of this triangle so that I created this cute little peyote strip beaded bail right there and there's hung a jump ring on it like that so that I could add the earring finding with you know great ease just by using this little jump ring here 
Now, I'm not sh quite sure how I'm going to end mine up. So basically, I'm going to end the class right here. The, the um, point of the class was to show you guys how you can use circular peyote with increases to create this beautiful triangular shape with the open center. And then to create a separate piece of circular peyote with decreases in order to create this closed back. Um, I'm not too perfect at this part of it. <laughs> As you can see, um, I have a little room to improve. But both pieces look really similar. There are no like extreme areas of beads poking up. When I ran into that problem, I took my needle off and simply pulled some beads out and started again. Um, that's why this is a master class because I would like you to encourage you guys that as you work on these types of projects, you're going to need to problem solve. And sometimes that does mean uh, backtracking and removing some beads and then, you know, rethreading and continuing on. So that was the whole point of this class. I just love this technique. I have lots of 12 millimeter Rivoli's that are just like running rampant through my brain with creative ideas. You could actually make three to five of these little things and you could make a beautiful little statement necklace and that is probably exactly what I will be doing at some point. This is all of the bronze um, delicates that I have left after completing these three little triangles but I am ordering some today. So if I decide to do a project tutorial on building an actual necklace with these beautiful um, Swarovski beaded bezels, I will be sure to either write a pattern or do a blog post. All right, folks. So one thing I'd like to add before I close this off, this is definitely a master class because of the amount of judgment calls that you have to make when you are beating the backside and the, you know, learning to deal with the little bit of frustration that comes with having to, you know, backtrack and take a beat or two out here and there. If you are not that great at peyote yet, I have a ton of articles and blog posts and videos on my website and here on YouTube in my Bead Weaving 101 series where you can go in and do some practicing before you tackle a project that is as complex as this one. All right, so that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this little masterclass. Have a great day and thank you for watching.